and I'm a Chartered Civil Engineer. Um, today I'm at the Royal Docks and as you can see City Airport is behind me. The development of the Royal Docks started in the 1850s, first with the Victoria Dock which is behind me and then with this dock which is the Royal Albert. These docks were needed because ships were getting bigger and these were the civil engineering innovations of their day. Deep enough to take those new ships and they had the railways come right to the dock side so that they could quickly take the goods on to their next destination. The Victoria and Albert docks soon became the busiest docks in London and there was a need for another. In 1911, construction started on the King George V dock, which is just the other side of the runway from me here, and was nearly stopped by the outbreak of World War I. But in 1921, it finally opened and it featured an 11 metre deep dock 64 acres of dockland, three miles of new roads, 11 miles of new railway, and two bridges, a swing bridge and a bascule bridge. To construct the docks, civil engineers had to remove gravels. They reused these on site, recycling them in the concrete which formed the back of the dock walls. The lock of the new dock was particularly revolutionary at 225 metres. It enabled the longest ships of the day to enter the docks. But what people probably didn't know about were the six tunnels that run underneath the lock, carrying water, gas and electricity to make sure that the networks can keep operating. The Royal Docks became less commercially viable in the 1960s with the growth of container shipping, with places like Felixstowe becoming much bigger further out along the estuary. In 1981, there was a new idea for the Royal Docks, a conversation between civil engineering company Morelands and the Docklands came up with the idea of building a runway on the wharf between the two docks here. The airport would provide a new international hub for the financial industry being developed in the city and in Canary Wharf. The first flight from the airport was in 1987 and by 2008 3.3 million flights were taking off and landing annually. Since the opening of City Airport, civil engineers have continued to help the area develop. In 2005, a new DLR link was built to City Airport, and in 2012, the Emirates Airline cable car opened, linking the Royal Docks to Greenwich Peninsula and the Millennium Dome, now the O2 Arena. Work at the airport's not yet complete, with plans to operate 30,000 additional flights by 2025 civil engineers have again been called upon to deliver that infrastructure. I'm continuing to add to the legacy left by civil engineers at the Royal Docks. In my current role, I'm the project engineer for the Silvertown Rowan Tunnel, a proposed new tunnel underneath the Thames, linking the Greenwich Peninsula to the Royal Docks City Airport and beyond. Here at the Royal Docks, you can see the impact civil engineers have on providing the infrastructure which supports the economic success of our country. But it's not all about economic success. As a civil engineer with Transport for London, I help make life in the city work. By providing transport, we ensure that Londoners can access work, travel, leisure and see family and friends. I love being a civil engineer as everything I do makes a difference to our society and I would like to invite anybody watching to come and join us and make a difference.